Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become reality. Today we're going to make 2D floating damage text. Specifically, I don't know if you guys have played this game, it's on Android iOS, it's called Random Dice. It's a 2D tower defense type of game, and in that game they use floating damage text. So we're going to look specifically at how they do it. You can see right here how it's done. So we're going to do it just like this. It gives you some feedback about how much damage you're doing at a time without the need for a health bar, but maybe also with the health bar. You can choose, we're not going to go into health bar in this, we're just going to do the damage text. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it specifically like how they do it. So let's hop in and take a look at how you implement 2D floating damage text. For this tutorial, we're going to use the free asset Lean Tween. This allows us to animate our UI much more efficiently than using the animator component. We're also going to be building on object pooling. If you don't know what that is, you can just copy paste the object pool and poolable object scripts, but I highly recommend you go back to the previous tutorial and check out the introduction to object pooling. We'll create two scripts. Damageable and Fade Out Tween. Damageable will be attached to any object we'd like to receive damage and fade out tween is the text that will fade out. Damageable will show the fade out tween whenever it receives damage. Then we'll create a text mesh pro text and put a really large number that's probably higher than any damage we'll actually have in our game. We'll position it on top of the player, add a canvas group since we want it to fade out, and play with the material so it looks similar to our target, which is the random dice text. Let's jump into Visual Studio and set up our fade out tween. It requires a canvas group and a text mesh pro UGUI component. We'll add references there that will be assigned automatically on awake. And before we start adding any tweening, let's take a really close look at how does this text actually animate in random dice. We'll see that the text appears, grows slightly larger, shrinks back to the original size, waits a second, and then starts to go up and fade out, but does not shrink anymore. The critical behaves the same way, except that it appears a little bit higher and is a different color. We will notice that the critical text fades out to the same height as the other text. So we can use the same transition from lean tween to transform the position from where it starts to the same endpoint, and it should look correct. Since we see there's a slight difference between if something's critical or not, we'll create a public void fade out with a boolean is critical. If it is a critical, we'll set the text color to, I'm just gonna put red, but you can choose any color. Otherwise, we'll keep it white and we'll set the position, the local position, to be slightly higher on critical than the not critical. Since we set the height to be 25, I'm gonna use 25 as the base position and I'll choose something slightly higher, maybe 40 for the critical. Another important thing is to make sure that we set the alpha to be one. Since we know we're going to fade this out, we need to set the canvas group alpha to be visible again as soon as we start this animation and fade out will be the entry point into animating out this text. Lean tween provides the API to scale an object. We saw that the object became slightly larger. I'm going to use 1.2 by default and let's say it takes 0.2 seconds. This is a multi-stage animation. So on complete, I want to kick off another animation and that will just be to scale back down to the original size. I'm going to choose the same duration. I think this scale looked like it came up and down in the same speed, but we want it to be slightly delayed, right? It came up, was visible, and then went back out. So I'm going to use 0.4. We'll see how all these values I'm just making up right now. I don't know how good or bad they'll look. We'll press play, check it out, and adjust them as needed. Once we scale back to normal, again, we need a third step, which is the actual go up and fade out piece. So I'll set, set on complete to fade out text. In fade out text, we know that we need to actually make it fade out and lean tween provides that via alpha canvas. That's why we needed a canvas group. There's not an option to fade out text color, at least that I could see. So that's why we did it this way. And the second piece of that is we also want to move the local Y position to be going up. So I'm again choosing something like 60 pixels up and I'm gonna set both of these to be a 0.4 duration. The important piece is that they're both the same duration because you saw that the text went up and faded out at the same time and the animation stopped at the same place. Again, I'm gonna set the delay to be 0.4. I don't know if that's accurate, we'll see. And once it's fully completed, we want to disable this game object. So I'll create a private void disable and and set the game object to be disabled once the animation is completed, which will re-add this automatically to the pool. 
since we extended the poolable object class. Also on start, I'm going to fade out just so I can see this. We can mess with the animation a little bit, make sure that it looks good, and then we'll remove that start function to fade out because we only want it to actually fade out when we've received damage. All these numbers are cool, but if I want to mess with this animation, it this is not flexible, right? It's all hard-coded values. So what I'm going to do is refactor all of these numbers to be class member variables that are all public, so I can modify them in the inspector, and I'll assign them just to be the default values that I just used, and we'll see how they operate in the game. So I'm just going to go through here real fast, add a variable for each of these numbers so we can modify them in the inspector and quickly iterate on our animation. We'll head back over to the damageable class and we will add a reference to the fade out text tween and we'll make that be the damage prefab. That's gonna be our text that animates. We want to format the number, so we'll use the string number format N0. The next thing here, the range int damage range, it's just so we can have a different number show up each time. Uh, I'm gonna make it be 10 to 20,000 and we'll make the object pool as well. So on awake, we will instantiate the object pool. I'm gonna use 50. I don't think I can click 50 times a second, so it's probably okay. I'm gonna make a function that is button click take damage. Most likely you don't want this in your game. This is just for our demo so I can click the button and have it take damage. The take damage function is the real deal. We we'll want it to take an int for the amount of damage taken and a boolean of if it was critical or not. In there we'll just get an instance of the poolable object. We will get a reference to the fade out text tween. We'll set the parent to be this object because we want to animate above this particular object. We'll set the text to be the damage in the string number format that we wanted and we will start fading out based on whether it's critical or not. And the button click take damage, I'm just going to pick a random number in our damage range and we'll make them have approximately a 20% chance of criticaling. So we'll do random value less than 0.2f. Let's hop back over to the Unity editor. We'll rename the text to be damage text. Add a button that will, we'll use this button just to make our player take damage to simulate that effect. We'll name it take damage and we'll add an on click to the damageable. We can hook up the button click take damage to the button on click. We can also hook up that damage text prefab that we created a second ago. Click play. And if I click take damage, we'll see the text comes in and out. We see the object pool working. If we look at this animation, it seems like it's it's a little bit slow, not exactly how we had in random dice. So we'll go to the prefab, the damage text prefab, and I'm just going to lower these numbers. Scale duration maybe to 0.1, scale delay maybe 0.25, fade out delay, and maybe we'll just lower it to 0.3. We'll leave the fade out duration, I think that one's okay. And let's take another look. That looks a lot better. The move amount looks like maybe it was a little bit higher in random dice, but this is a good effect right here. There's one thing here though, the critical, whichever object gets added next actually overlaps the critical. And if we look really closely at that animation from random dice, the critical shows up in front of all the other damage. So how can we achieve that effect too? You'll notice it's related to the transform order. If we add two damage texts to the player and we align them, whichever one is last is the one that shows up on top. To fix this in the damageable script, Whenever we're creating the tween text, we'll check if it's a critical, and if it is, set it as the last sibling. If it's not a critical, we'll set it as the second to last sibling by using set sibling index and getting the child count of the parent transform and subtracting two from that. If we go back to the Unity editor and click play, we'll see that the criticals come to the front and all other text is behind that. And there we have it, a very random dice looking floating text. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. Floating damage text really adds another layer of immersion for your players into your game. And if you implement this in your game, let me know in the comments below. Or if you have any suggestions or a topic you'd like me to cover, also leave that in the comments below. And you know it, I'll see you on the next video.